Okay, here I'm about to make my first cast ever with a jerkbait from a beach. And I was more surprised than anyone at the results. So yeah, that was literally the first cast with a jerk bait, and this fish was at 19, 20 inches. This is literally the third cast, and my plan was to hopefully catch one or two on the jerk bait and then move on to gulp or kitek but that's not how it panned out for the rest of the day, as you'll see. So by now Mark has joined me and it's a pretty good comparison. We're fishing pretty much side by side. He's using the standard quarter ounce jig head with the six inch gulp jerk shad. And for most of this tide, as long as the water stayed clean, we were pretty much neck and neck in terms of both quantity and quality. Mark. Dude. So for those of you who don't know, a jerkbait is a type of minnow plug that you work by snapping and popping off slack line. This makes the bait dart and cut left to right, and when you pause it, the bait suspends in place. It doesn't float, it doesn't sink, it stays right there. Now you can straight retrieve a jerkbait like an SP minnow and catch the occasional fish, but that's not the point of this technique. The purpose of a jerkbait is to provide a ton of visual flash and stimuli and clear water. 
so a predatory fish can see it from afar. Then suspend perfectly on the paws to give them time to close that distance in cold water. Once they reach the bait, the next series of erratic darts will hopefully trigger a bite from a fish that doesn't necessarily want to eat. It's one of the best ways to trigger a pure reaction bite from cold lethargic fish. And that's how a jerkbait is used in freshwater bass fishing. Dude, Mark. So that fish was about five pounds on the boga grip. Pretty nice. Now what's surprising is just how similar a fluke seems to approach the same jerk bait as a largemouth or smallmouth bass would. I am essentially working these baits exactly as I would in freshwater, albeit with slightly exaggerated action, since the water is warmer and for the most part any fluke you come across in short is here to feed. I am not, Hello. as our west coast calibut chasers tend to do, chucking and winding my jerk baits. You see that a lot on the flat oh. sloping beaches of California. They would throw a Lucky Craft flash minnow and for the most part they're covering water. They're not really using the jerk bait as it's intended, at least in fresh water. I am literally snapping them off slack line and giving it distinct pauses in between. And half these bites are coming off the paws. Just a classic, classic jerkbait bite from Fluke. Which was frankly mind-boggling. Even now, looking back on it, um, it's not what I expected at all. I thought the retrieve, the cadence, everything had to be somewhat different, but like I said, it's essentially the same technique. Oh, it came off. <laughs> it's okay. Go. So I'm experimenting with different retrieves, but for the most part, I am doing the classic hitting the bait off slack line and every now and then I'll mix in a pull um, but when you hit the jerk bait on slack line that's when you get that very crisp left right cutting action and that's the hallmark of the technique and that's really how you trigger bites using this bait. No. Get rid of your piece of shit. Please. <laughs> because that was sided. Yeah. A little over four. Really? Yeah. I must have got deceived by that white side when it came up. You did. Yeah, so as you can see, both Mark and I are just sort of in disbelief at how well this technique is working out so far. Um, here I catch the biggest fish of the day, 
And I do catch another one that was similar. I ended up with, I think, over 10 keepers. And once again, keeper being 18 inches and above. Not this bullshit 17-inch slot that we have in Jersey this year. Mark! I can't just skull drag him. Dude, why is it bleed? Oh shit. Do you see six? Yeah. Six. Six flat. So I did consider keeping that one, but since it did swim off, who knows? Yeah. Um, you know, you you, you yeah. do the best you can. Yeah. I mean, I haven't kept a fluke in years, and that fish was so aggressive that it came up and held the jerk bait, the tail hook. I guess nicked one of its gill plates, and it started bleeding. I do the best I can. Now, these, these jerk baits come with three sets of treble hooks. And as I do in freshwater, as I do with all my crankbait jerk baits, I replace them with owner inline single hooks. And I'll leave a link to everything I'm using down below. I'll pick a couple of the jerk baits that seem to work better than the others. But keep in mind, jerk bait fishing is a huge topic. And as this season progress, I will hone the technique for this application anyway. This is always where I have the most fun, discovering something new and turning it every which way in my hand to sift out sort of the essence of what works and why it works. Then, in some cases anyway, sharing it with you guys. The rod I'm using is the Shimano X Pride 72 medium light casting. And it's the old version. They revamped the X Pride for 2022, and the new ones are phenomenal. I picked up a couple. I'm working on a review for those, but that's going to take me all season. The reel is the Daiwa Zillion SVTW, it's the previous generation reel, and I've relegated it to beach fluke duties um, salt water and bay casting reel especially on a sandy beach is sort of an iffy proposition you have to be very careful you see me washing all the sand off my hands and it pays to be a little OCD when you're using this type of equipment on a sandy beach Oh, my hook! <sighs> okay, so this is my second six-pounder of the trip to round out the day. Fucking hell! Imagine that. I'm telling you, man, we're so spoiled. Dude, it's 
not bad, man. Like five and three, it's, it's touching six. Okay, so as I mentioned, these are early days and if the jerk bait keeps producing, you guys can expect a lot more details on the technique forthcoming. And I'm actually excited about fluking again, which is rather surprising after all this time. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and tight lines.